compound interest, there's going to be a couple different uh, equations that you need to be familiar with for compound interest. Okay. The first one is when interest is compounded some set number of times in a year. So it might be annually, it might be quarterly, it might be monthly, it might be weekly, it might be daily. Okay, so if you're given some specific number of times that it's being compounded uh, each or with respect to the uh, year, you're going to use the same formula no matter which of these uh, times that you're or the number of compoundings that occur in that year. Okay, and that formula is going to be A, the amount at any given time is equal to P, the principal or original investment times the quantity 1 plus R, the rate, interest rate of the investment, over N, the number of compoundings per year, all to the power of N times T. And so again, let's kind of review what these uh, variables represent. So A is the amount or the account balance. Okay, P is the original investment called the principal. The R value is the interest rate. And it's represented as a decimal. Okay, so what that means is if you had 15%, the decimal equivalent for percent is based on its name. Per meaning divided by cent 100. So if you took 15 divided by 100, well, dividing any number by 100 moves its decimal places 2 to the left. So we're just going to take the decimal, move it 2 to the left, so we get 0.15. Okay, make sure you represent it as a decimal. Okay, that's probably the biggest mistake on these. Okay, N is the number of compoundings per year. So if you go up here and you look at the N values for each of these, if it's being compounded annually, that means that just every at the end of every year, your interest is calculated. How many times would it be calculated during a year? Just one, right? So n would be one. What about quarterly? Four times a year. What about monthly? Twelve times a year. What about weekly? Approximately 52 times a year. And what about daily? Again, approximately 365 times. Okay, so based on the number of compoundings, okay, this number, this value for n will change. And then finally, the last variable, t, is the time, and that's done in years. Okay. All right, so I'm going to leave this key up here on the wall, but on any of the computers, okay, it'll change. To, uh, I want you to, or I want to walk through a problem involving compound interest. Okay, so let's say you have the following: uh, you invest five thousand dollars at five point six percent compounded quarterly. What is the value after six years? All right, so if you look at the way that the pieces fit with this problem, okay, your equation that you're going to use is this compound interest equation. So A equals the original investment times 1 plus R over N, the interest rate divided by the number of compoundings per year all to the nt power. Okay, so if we start to plug in the values for each of these, our p-value is going to be 5,000. That's our original investment. 1 plus our interest rate is 5.6%. So again, we move the decimal two places to the left. 
we get 0 0.056. Our n value, compounded quarterly, so how many times per year will it be compounded? So it'll be, the interest is calculated four times a year. And so up on here, we get four times our t value of six for six years. Okay, now, there's a couple places or there, you need to be careful when you type this in your calculator. Okay, so again, I encourage you all to make sure that you do it to, make, to see if you're making the mistake I'm gonna talk about. Okay, so I want you to calculate this and just see what you get. You don't have to say it out loud or anything. I'm gonna talk through it a second. But I do want you to try to calculate this first and see if um, you avoid the common mistake. All right, so I want you to follow along, follow with how I'm entering this on my calculator. All right, so I take my original investment, 5,000 <laughs> times, now I take one plus 0 0.056 divided by four. Okay, now let's look at this value here. Right, if you look at the order of operations that your calculator is gonna follow, right, in this grouping symbol here, is, am I going to uh, divide 0 0.056 by 4 and then add that to 1? Or is your calculator going to add 1 plus 0 0.056 and then take that whole quantity and divide by 4? First scenario or second? Okay. When looking at your calculator, it's going to perform what, what first? Adding or dividing? It's going to divide first, right? It doesn't matter from left to right, right? Your calculator has the order of operations programmed into it. And so when it when it calculates this, it's going to divide the 0 0.056 by 4, and then it's going to add it to 1. Is that what we want it to do? Yeah, so it's fine, right? Now, would it hurt to put grouping symbols around this? No, it's not going to hurt. In fact, it might be a good idea to do that. And you don't need to, but it might be a good idea. And now, let's say we go to the next part, which is to the power of 4 times 6. And now, if the way I've entered it here, is the calculator going to interpret order of operations as taking this whole quantity in the parentheses to the power of 4, and then taking that value times 6? Or is your calculator going to take 4 times 6, and then put that as the power of this whole quantity? Yeah, it's going to do the first one, right? Because your calculator is told it needs to do exponents first and then multiply. And so the way that we have it written here, and if you wrote it like this, it's going to be the wrong value. And so you need to do one of two things. Easiest thing, just put grouping symbols around this NT value. And if you do it around both of them, that's even better probably just to avoid any uh, confusion. But make sure you put grouping symbols around here. In this particular case, 4 times 6 is an easy calculation, right? You could have just written 24, and that's fine. Okay, but make sure, if you're not, that you put the 4 times 6. Now, notice what it looks like when I display it. Okay, when I hit Enter, up here in your display, it shows the calculations just like they appear here, right? Is there any difference between what I have written here and what my calculator shows? No. Now, if I were to go back and get rid of these grouping symbols... Now what? Is that different than what it shows? See how this 6 is, isn't is part of the power? Hey, make it a habit to look at your display on the calculator. It allows you to verify whether you're doing it right or wrong. Okay, now, um, if you looked at that and you got an answer of, if you took $5,000 and in six years you were at 5.6%, you were able to turn it into 31000 Does that make sense?